This video is part of Perfect Competition. In it, I will show you how to derive a perfectly competitive firm's supply curve and the market supply curve. Firms will choose to produce in the short run as long as market price is above the minimum of average variable cost. So, as you'll see, that's where a firm's supply curve begins. As we consider higher and higher market prices, the horizontal firm demand curve rises and intersects marginal cost at higher and higher quantities. In this fashion, the relationship between market price and the profit maximizing quantity is traced out. This is how we derive a perfectly competitive firm's supply curve. Let me show you. Here you see an example of a firm in a perfectly competitive market. It's got an upward sloping marginal cost curve. Suppose that the market sets a price of $6. That is, suppose P star is 6. The firm's demand curve is therefore horizontal at this price and equal to its marginal revenue as well as its average revenue. If this firm is going to stay open, it will choose to produce a quantity of 140 units because that's the quantity that maximizes profit by setting marginal revenue, or price, equal to marginal cost. At this quantity, the firm will, in this picture, stay open because average revenue, or price, is more than enough to cover its average variable cost. To summarize, if the price is $6, the firm will stay open and produce a quantity of 140. What if the price was instead $7? Now the firm's demand curve would be horizontal at seven and demand would be equal to both marginal revenue and average revenue. If the firm's going to stay open, it will produce a quantity now of 215 units because that's the quantity that equates marginal revenue with marginal cost. At this quantity, the firm will stay open Average revenue is more than enough to cover average variable cost at a quantity of 215. So at a price of seven, the quantity the firm will supply is 215 units. If the price is $8, the firm's demand will be horizontal at the price of $8 and equal to both marginal revenue and average revenue. If the firm chooses to stay open, it will produce a quantity at this price of 285 units. At this quantity, the firm will stay open because average revenue is more than enough to cover average variable cost. What I'm trying to show you is at any one of these prices, six, seven, or eight dollars, marginal cost is doing the job of supply. Marginal cost is doing the job of supply because at every price we go to marginal cost and down to get the quantity that the firm will sell in order to maximize profit. Again, at every price, marginal cost is what's telling us the quantity the firm will supply to maximize profit. In this way, supply is marginal cost, but not so fast. Supply is only the portion of marginal cost above the minimum of average variable cost. To explain why, consider a price less than the minimum value of average variable cost, here equal to $5. If, for example, the price was $4, At a price of $4, the firm's demand would be horizontal at that price. If the firm was to stay open, it would produce the profit maximizing quantity where marginal revenue or price of four equals marginal cost. But the problem is at this quantity, the average revenue is not enough to cover the average variable cost and so the firm would just shut down. For any price 
less than the minimum of average variable cost, the average revenue will not be enough to cover the average variable cost and the firm will just shut down. Therefore, supply is the section of marginal cost above the minimum of the average variable cost curve. To get supply for the entire market, we add up the quantity supplied by each firm. The short run market supply is the horizontal sum of the individual firm supply curves. Let me explain horizontal summation. Here's a simple example with only two firms. S1 is the supply for firm one and S2 the supply for firm two. To derive the market supply, we're gonna horizontally sum S1 and S2. Horizontal summation means at every price, we sum the quantity supplied by firm one and the quantity supplied by firm two. At every price, we sum the quantities of all, here both, firms. So, for example, at a price of five, firm two won't supply any units of the good, firm one will supply 50 units, and so the market will supply zero plus 50 is 50. At a price of six, Firm two will supply 25 units. Firm one will supply 140 units. So the market will supply 25 plus 140 for 165. At a price of seven, firm two will sell 100 units. Firm one will sell 215 units. And so the market supply is 100 plus 215 or 315 units. At every price, we sum the quantities to get the market supply. We call this horizontal summation. In this example, the market supply curve is kinked because both firms have a different starting point for their supply curves. That is, it's not until the price gets to five that firm one enters the market, and it's not until the price gets to six that firm two enters the market, causing the market demand curve to kink. In the examples that we will do, all the firms in a perfectly competitive market are assumed to be identical, not only in the product that they're producing, but also in their cost. So for our class, all the supply curves will, will be identical, and so the market demand curve won't be kinked and instead will be linear.